On February 18th of 1982, a human skull was found in the woods behind a machine shop on Cannon Road in Twinsburg, Ohio, by employees dumping shavings. It was determined the remains were that of an African-American male between 20 and 35 years old. His manner of death was ruled a homicide. It was theorized he had been deceased for one to four years before being found. Unable to determine who the remains belonged to, he became known as Twinsburg John Doe 1982. In 2009, a detective reopened the cold case to conduct DNA testing. His DNA was placed into CODIS, but produced no matches. Over the next several years, a college professor made a sketch of John Doe using the skull, and a forensic artist created a clay model of it to show what the man looked like when he was still alive, but nothing came of it. Thanks to the DNA Doe Project and Detective Eric Hendershot of the Twinsburg Police Department, nearly 40 years later, he finally got his name back as Frank Frankie Little Jr. The positive identification was the result of genealogical research from the DNA Doe Project, which had provided names of potential living relatives. Frankie's DNA profile was compared with those in public genealogy databases, which helped investigators build a family tree, leading them to the surname Little and a handful of possible options. At that point, Detective Hendershot called Margaret O'Sullivan, a cousin of Frankie's, who confirmed that she'd had a cousin who'd gone missing and that her cousin had a brother who was still living in Georgia. Finally, after obtaining a DNA sample from his brother, he was officially identified. Frankie was born in 1943 and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. He served in the U.S. Army for two years, including the Vietnam War. He had a daughter who passed away in 2012 without ever knowing what happened to her father, and he has a son who has not yet been located or identified. Frankie was a guitarist and songwriter who played with the R&B group OJs in the mid-1960s, although his time with the OJs was brief. He was not a founding member of the group that began in Canton, Ohio, but was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2005. The lead singer of the R&B group, Eddie Levert, described Little as a sentimental, loving, and compassionate person. The OJs recently sent a statement to Rolling Stone stating that Frankie was a guitarist and songwriter in the very early days of the OJs. He was with the band when they first ventured out of Cleveland and traveled to Los Angeles, but he was in love with a woman in Cleveland that he missed so much that he soon returned after a short amount of time. That was in the mid-1960s, and they'd never heard from him again. Police say he was last known to live in the area of East 105th Street and Superior Avenue in Cleveland and have no idea how he disappeared or where he lived toward the end of his life. His remaining family members are grateful that he has been identified and could now be laid to rest properly. On December 23, 2004, kids playing in a barn behind First Baptist Church near the intersection of Highway 69S and FM 2813 in South Tyler, Texas, found human remains. The body was wearing a blue jacket, blue jeans, a black baseball cap, and brown Rockport shoes. The remains were sent to a forensic lab for possible identification, and investigators checked all local missing person reports in the area, but the remains didn't match anyone. At the time, all that could be determined was that it was a white male between 27 and 42 years old, and he had died months earlier that same year, possibly of natural causes or from the cold weather at the time. Unable to identify him, he became known as Barn John Doe 2004 for the next 17 years. In 2019, Detective Holt of the Tyler Police Department presented the case to the DNA Doe Project. Using genetic genealogy, the DNA Doe Project was able to determine the Doe's identity in August 2021. However, there were complications and difficulties along the way. The DNA sample was very small in quantity and heavily contaminated with bacteria. 
Thankfully, Hudson Alpha Discovery Labs were able to perform whole genome sequencing and Saber Investigations were able to perform the bioinformatics. His family tree included a lot of endogamy with relatives in Missouri and Kentucky and as a result, relatives appeared more closely related than they really were. In addition, the research tree sent the genetic genealogist as far away as Scotland to find common ancestors between DNA matches. A photo later provided of him shows he was balding, but a sketch which was not created until 16 years later in 2020 depicted him with a full head of long hair. He was also 10 years older than the oldest estimated age. He was found with no personal items with him, and it is unclear if he was ever reported missing. Detective Holt then contacted his family members to confirm his identity. On December 14, 2021, it was announced to the public that he had been identified as Kim Ryan Casey. Kim was born in 1952 and would have been 52 years old at the time of his death. He was last known to be living in Capel, Texas while homeless and traveling. His body was located about 100 miles away from Capel. Sadly, not much else is known about him at this time. On March 1, 1992, a female trucker pulled over to check her fuel tanks on the Interstate 80 turnoff at the Bitter Creek Rest Area in Sweetwater, Wyoming. She spotted what she thought was a pile of trash at the bottom of the ridge. She decided to take a closer look and found a woman's body in the snow. It was determined that she was between 24 and 32 years old. Investigators thought she could possibly have Native American ancestry. A pair of pink underwear and a pair of sweatpants were found near the body. The victim had a gold ring on her left ring finger and a gold necklace. The victim had a vertical C-section scar and a tattoo of a rose on her right breast, which was traced to a business in Tucson, Arizona. A man informed police he had given this woman her tattoo and recalled additional details about the woman through hypnosis. She was apparently a transient hitchhiker and spoke without a distinctive accent. On the day she received her tattoo, she wore a brown peasant dress with yellow flowers, but he did not know her name. Unable to determine her identity, she became known as Bitter Creek Betty, or Rose Doe, and was buried in Rest Haven Memorial Gardens. A month after Bitter Creek Betty was found, Wyoming Department of Transportation workers found human remains. An autopsy did not determine the cause of death, and she became known as I-90 Jane Doe or Sheridan County Jane Doe. Both victims were later determined to be two of three known victims of serial killer Clark Perry Baldwin. The third victim, 32-year-old Pamela Rose Aldridge McCall of Virginia, was also pregnant. She was found murdered in Tennessee near I-65 in 1991. Tennessee reopened Pamela's case in April 2019, and using DNA recovered from a paper towel, authorities created a DNA profile of the suspect. When put into a national database, the DNA came back as a match for a suspect in the two unsolved homicides in Wyoming. The DNA profile was entered into a genealogy database and matched one of Baldwin's relatives. Eventually, police and the FBI narrowed it down to Baldwin and collected DNA from his trash and from a Walmart shopping cart he'd used, and it was a match. In May 2020, 59-year-old Baldwin of Waterloo, Iowa, was arrested and charged with the murder of the three victims, along with that of Pamela McCall's unborn child. Sheridan County court records show Baldwin was cited for parking on a highway in Sweetwater County in 1993 and was a long-haul truck driver most of his life. His criminal record also included a sexual assault charge in Texas from 1991, though he was never convicted. In 1997, Secret Service agents raided Baldwin's apartment in Springfield, Iowa after learning he was allegedly making counterfeit U.S. currency on a personal computer. He and two female associates were indicted on the counterfeiting charges. He was then sentenced to 18 months in prison and released in 1999. Baldwin was living in an apartment at Waterloo's historic hotel Russell Lamson where he was also arrested. 
One of his neighbors said he was quiet, kept to himself, and never said anything, not even hi. In 2021, Bitter Creek Betty was identified and is of Native American heritage. At the request of the family, they have left the notification of her name in the hands of the FBI, which has not been announced as of December 2021. The other victim, known as Sheridan County Jane Doe, has not yet been identified. However, their alleged killer remains behind bars. On May 3, 2002, a man's body was found floating in the Gulf of Mexico, about a mile and a half north of Doctors Pass Beach in Naples, Florida, near the shore. Unfortunately, the medical examiner was unable to determine the cause of death. Detectives compared fingerprints through the Florida Department of Law Enforcement database and the National Automated Fingerprint Identification System several times over the following years without success. Detectives also entered the man into the NCIC as unidentified remains. The man's DNA profile and dental information, along with fingerprints and a composite sketch, were uploaded to NamUs. Investigators at the Collier County Sheriff's Office turned to the public once again in 2018 in an attempt to identify the John Doe. Detectives would even release an updated facial reconstruction. On November 23, 2021, a positive match was finally made between the fingerprints uploaded to NamUs and the John Doe's Armed Forces fingerprint card, which had been prepared November 15, 1972, the day he enlisted. The Collier County Sheriff's Office announced on December 6, 2021, that the body was identified as Edward Lorenz Richard of Spencer, Massachusetts. Richard was 49 years old at the time of his death. His fingerprints had been placed into his military personnel file and maintained in the Department of Defense's National Archives. Unidentified persons' record prints retained in the NamUs database have been made available to the FBI for comparison to archived fingerprint cards. After receiving notification of the match, detectives were able to locate Edward's brother and adult son in Massachusetts the following day. Family members told the sheriff's office that Richard wanted to go to Florida 20 years before his body was found. His son had bought him a bus ticket, and he left Massachusetts, heading to either Tampa or Miami in about 1982. When he left, he gave all of his identification cards to his family. They did not hear from him again and do not know what he was doing for the next 20 years and did not know that his body was found in 2002. Edward's brother, Paul Richard, said that his brother had demons, which included alcohol, and the family was always waiting for him to hit rock bottom. His brother, Paul, stated that his brother was attracted to people on the homeless kind of scale, and he would have hung out with them, so he may have been homeless. He says he also may have just been hot and decided to go swimming and got caught in something. Or, his demons may have overcome him, and the water and swimming and boating and fishing were part of his life, and that might have been his best place. The family said, although Edward was battling alcoholism, he often found serenity near the water and had always loved swimming, boating, and fishing. His family is looking forward to laying him to rest in Massachusetts. On September 18, 1995, local children playing behind the clubhouse diner on Street Road in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, found human remains. Found buried nearby were two crucifixes, one silver and one gold, and a white t-shirt that read, Property of Alcatraz Penitentiary Swim Team, San Francisco. Also found was a blue quilted sleeveless vest, a pink t-shirt with KPMG Pete Marwick on it, and a wooden bead massage cushion. After an autopsy, it was determined the victim was an adult white woman between the ages of 35 to 45 years of age. She'd been dead for two to three years, and her death was ruled a homicide by unspecified means. She had given birth at least once and was between 4 foot 8 to 5 foot 2 inches tall with brown hair. County officials would bury the unidentified woman in an unmarked grave. 
Unable to determine her identity, she became known as the Clubhouse Jane Doe for the next 26 years. More than 50 missing women were excluded as possible matches between 2004 and 2021, but no direct matches were uncovered. In 2004, Detective Chris McMullen of the Ben Salem Police Department, who reopened the Jane Doe case in 2002, was granted a court order to have Jane Doe's body exhumed to take DNA samples. The DNA samples were then entered into CODIS. However, despite trying several times, they never got any hits. With the help of the Doe Network, a 3D sculpture of the victim was created, but despite media coverage of the facial reconstruction, it did not generate any new leads. In 2021, with the help of forensic testing lab Bode Technology, investigators built a DNA profile of the Jane Doe. In November 2021, her profile was uploaded to genealogy research websites GEDmatch and FamilyTreeDNA.com, which compiles data from different DNA testing companies. In December 2021, the DNA matched to a surviving sibling who submitted their DNA into a genealogy website to help build their family tree. Thanks to investigators with the Ben Salem Police Department, innovative forensic investigations in Virginia, and Bode Technology, the woman has now been identified as Mary Beth Hodgkinson, a Bucks County woman who vanished from Warminster, Pennsylvania in 1992. Mary Beth was one of eight children and graduated from William Tennant High School in Warminster in 1979. She was around the age of 31 when she died and was declared legally dead in 2006. Her family said they reported her missing to Philadelphia and Warminster police, but a missing persons report was not found. Authorities learned that Mary Beth was a single mother of two. She worked as a dancer in the local strip club circuit, including the Oakford Inn off Old Lincoln Highway in Travose, now known as Scruples, and lived in a rent-by-the-week motel in Ben Salem, but also rented a room over the Oakford Inn. She also had an apartment in northeast Philadelphia. One of her brothers told Detective McMullen that he did have a sister who was last seen in September of 1992. It is believed that she was killed soon after and was actually found in the same county she grew up and lived in, yet no one put it together at the time. The murder of Mary Beth Hodgkinson is still under investigation, and authorities are asking for information from those who knew Mary Beth at the time, such as friends, co-workers, and others in her social circles. Her death appears to mirror the murder of another exotic dancer that same year. The body of 42-year-old Toshiko Chacho was also found near her home in September of 1992. In 1994, William Wildbuild Montgomery was arrested in connection with the murder of Toshiko and another young woman whose body was also found near the Delaware River in August 1993. It is possible that he is also Mary Beth's killer, but that part of the case still remains unsolved.